Black Talk Radio Network is made possible in part with help from the Black Talk Media Project, a North Carolina-based nonprofit engaged in the production and distribution of independent digital black media. Find out more by going to blacktalkradionetwork.com or blacktalkmediaproject.org and look for the menu tab, Crowdfunding Black Media. Black Talk Media Project, helping to provide you with new black media for the new millennium. expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. To this broadcast of Black Talk Radio News. My name, of course, is Scotty Reed. Uh, great to be back on these airways broadcasting to Black Talk Radio Network. Visit us online at blacktalkradionetwork.com. You can definitely check out some of my bar- podcast archives. And I'm sorry I have not been updating my podcast uh, as often as I should, but as I stated in some past podcasts, I have been pretty, pretty, pretty. Uh, busy, and I got so many people coming at me with so many different projects, and they're all worthy projects. And then things just happening here, uh, here in Gaston County, uh, where I live. Um, I guess I should also say that uh, Black Talk Radio News is also part of the Gaston County Community Talk uh, podcast platform, uh, which at this point is just a Facebook page. So let's keep it real. Um, but it is there. Now, I'm going to do something that I have not done in a while since I switched to primarily uh, video broadcasting. But let me go ahead and give out a telephone number in case you would like to call and weigh in on the subject matter that I'll be discussing. Um, You have to give me a second to pull up that number because I don't have it memorized anymore uh, since we no longer use the professional account at uberconference.com. I think I finally got my system figured out to where I can integrate my desktop uh, audio in with my laptop and then send that out over the video feed. And, of course, always we uh, are recording the audio and broadcasting it as well. But I think I got the audio levels pretty much figured out. Uh, I will know at the conclusion of this broadcast when I listen to the to the podcast. But um, definitely, you know, support uh, the production of independent black media. Um, programming like Black Talk Radio News with Scotty Reed, as well as a number of podcasts and programs that broadcast from BlackTalkRadioNetwork.com. And the way that you can support that is by making a tax-deductible donation to the Black Talk Media Project, which is based here in Gaston County, North Carolina, and has been around since 2008, elevating, elevating marginalized Voices. Now, on this particular broadcast and podcast, I want to just give another update on a local issue that has been happening here in Gaston County concerning the uh, Confederate so-called Heroes Monument that has been sitting on the courthouse grounds since 1912, um, and it was dedicated with a speech that was rife with racism and white supremacy talking points, talking about some Anglo-Saxon, pure-blooded North Carolinians. I mean, just absolutely um, ridiculous, absolutely just terrible, terrible, terrible. So anyway, so those who have caught some of the podcast, I think I may have put one or two of the podcast talking about this local issue on blacktalkradionetwork.com. I think the very last one was before there was a vote by the county commissioners during a special meeting. I believe that was on August the 3rd that they had that special meeting 
where the county commissioners voted five to two to relocate the Confederate monument. And then they voted six to one to convey ownership of that monument so that they could be within North Carolina law, um, which they are regardless of what they decide to do because it's not a state-owned monument. It was gifted by the Daughters of the Confederacy uh, to Gaston County. And um, it was first at the old courthouse, erected in 1912. Then uh, it was moved in 1998 to the new modern-looking uh, courthouse. And um, over the years, a number of uh, efforts have been made by county residents to relocate that monument. So um, they were able to achieve that through a lawful and orderly process, um, combining things like uh, marching, uh, demonstrations and petitions, and also attending county commissioner meetings to uh, make their voices known on the issue, as well as emailing and calling uh, the county commissioners and other uh, let's say leaders within the community. It was to a total community effort. Uh, again, it was lawful, it was orderly, it was peaceful, and those seeking a removal got the desired results. So yesterday, um, you know, I belong to several different groups on Facebook that's, uh, that is pertaining to Gaston County, uh, different groups. And so um, there was an agenda item that has been placed on the uh, August the 25th commissioner's meeting, which will be this Tuesday. I believe it'll be at six o'clock, but you can go to Gaston County's uh, county website uh, to get the details. And I'm sure, you know, we'll be sharing some stuff before then, but I believe it will start at six o'clock p.m. That's when it normally starts, to my recollection. Um, and so you had uh, two commissioners who, um, who have put forth a resolution to, to let's say, repeal the six to one vote on the resolution to convey ownership of the Confederate idol to the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Uh, I believe um, the proper name is the North Carolina Sons of Confederate Veterans. And I believe they may have different chapters throughout. Um, those who've been paying attention to this process would know that Bill Starnes, a citizen of Mount Holly, which is, of course, is within Gaston County, is a member of that organization. And he has sort of been the de facto leader uh, for those who want to keep the neo-Confederate uh, idol. Um, at our county courthouse. And so now we're hearing that um, we were told that they had offered, told Tracy Fieldbeck, the chairman of the county commissioners or the county board, that if the county commissioners voted to relocate, remove, relocate the monument, that they would like to take ownership of the monument. All right. So apparently that fell through. Now I talked about that on a podcast yesterday, just a little short personal podcast. Really, it wasn't really made for either network. Um, but um, I put out some information that may not have been clear. Uh, it may not have been fully understood. But let me back up a minute, because sometimes when I do live radio, my um, my mind is just all over the place as I think about the different issues, the different angles and what have you. And I think I failed to give in to give out the telephone number if anybody uh, who's watching this broadcast would like to comment. Uh, you can call me at 716-293. That's 716-293-9386. That is 716-293-9386. And the PIN number is 01. 975-01975. If you look in the description for this broadcast, you will see that number as long as we're live because I'll remove it once we go off off air. All right, so this is where this is where we at. Um, we had Commissioner Chad Brown, uh, who is the River Bend um, commissioner. Uh, that's the district in which I live in, and I don't think he's up for re-election until 2022, but we might as well start preparing to get him up out of here because uh, Chad Brown has proven that his allegiance lies with neo-Confederates and not uh, with the United States, despite the oath of allegiance that he took when he swore to uphold and defend the U.S. Constitution, but he wants to be show 
um, honor and give legitimacy to the Confederate, um, short-lived Confederate government that wanted to overthrow the United States. And so he, along with Jack Brown, who wrote a very nasty letter to the Gastonia Gazette, which is the local paper of record here in Gaston County, and wrote a very nasty uh, record, uh, excuse me, letter to the editor of the Gaston G Gazette where he was talk talking about people destroying things and riots and looting and things of that nature, typical right-wing talking points that you will hear coming from right-wing conservative media out outlets, but none of that has occurred in Gaston County. None, none of that, what they are complaining about or pointing to that's going on in other parts of the nation has taken place here in Gaston County. So again, this is uh, just trying to to demonize those who want to remove that uh, Confederate idol from the Gaston County Courthouse. And I would say that's a very diverse group of, of citizens and residents uh, here in Gaston County um, that span from Republicans to Democrats to Green Party members to Libertarians to apolitical people or non-political uh, people who don't have a party affiliation. Uh, I guess we would call those independents. Uh, which typically, when we're talking about nationally and probably countywide too, uh, independents make up one third of the voting uh, block. So, you know, I, I wanted to get the correct information and make sure we're putting out the right information. I have seen some stuff on Facebook where um, people mistakenly said that the county commission rescinded the resolution to remove and relocate the statue, that's not what has happened. As you can see, that form that has been uh, circulating on social media has not been signed. It hasn't been dated or anything of that nature. It has Tracy Fieldbeck's name on there, but he hasn't signed it. That's just, you know, they have a blank form and then they fill it in with whatever the agenda item that they're going to put on the agenda at the commissioner's meeting. So. Um, you had Chad Brown and Jack Brown uh, enter this new resolution to rescind the agreement with the Sons of the Confederate Veterans to take ownership of the statue, but they put in this resolution language that would also um, null and void the resolution to remove and relocate. Um, so, you know, I shared that yesterday. You definitely can go look at the resolution uh, yourself. Um, is on the county website, um, but I want to share a petition with you that is also in the program description. If you're a resident or you work in Gaston County, uh, we certainly hope that you will sign this petition, which will go directly to the individual emails of the county commission. And then also I'll be printing those off and delivering them uh, to the county commission on August the 25th at the Tuesday night. Uh, meeting. Hopefully, you know, my um, my appointment at the VA Health Clinic, I have an appointment coming up for a procedure, and hopefully, you know, I'll be okay to attend. If I can't, certainly my one of my two daughters uh, here in Gaston County will be able to deliver that, that petition, you know, uh, for us. So please sign that petition, which I'm going to pull it up right now and do a screen share with you so that you may see it and get a gist of what we're asking for. Now, again, a, a proper path um, that I think citizens should be advocating for that want the monument uh, to be relocated as uh, has already been voted upon. It doesn't matter where they relocate it to. They relocate it to storage for all I care, but it, it needs to be moved from the county courthouse. But um, because of Chad Brown and Commissioner Jack Brown's uh, resolution and the language that would leave the monument there at the county courthouse, um, I felt like I needed to create this petition and use the proper uh, language um, to point out who the parties are that came up and introduced this resolution. Again, Jack Brown and Chad Brown, not any of the other uh, commissioners, and i again been seeing information going out this is not entirely accurate not done in a malicious manner but it's just not accurate the, the um, resolutions that stand now have not been rescinded this is a new resolution to rescind those resolutions so of course 
we want the county commissioners, especially those, the five members, I believe that will be Tom Kiger, uh, Tracy Fieldbeck, um, uh, Hovis, I forget Mr. Hovis first name, and Worley, and Alan Fraley. Okay, those five members voted to relocate. And that's, that's a majority. The only two that wanted it to be there is Jack Brown and Chad Brown, and they are the ones behind this new resolution with the, the language in there to keep the monument right there. All right, uh, trying to use the excuse that the Sons of Confederate Veterans are dishonorable and not holding up their end of the deal and taking ownership of the statute. And, and so, again, we want those five commissioners to vote no on Chad Brown and, and Jack Brown's new resolution all right so um here is some of oh about this image neo confederate statue supporters counter protests in gaston county this is an actual image that was taken in dallas uh last weekend uh, which i believe that date would have been last saturday would have been august the 15th it was a a march that was planned by the gaston county freedom fighters it did not go off as planned uh, but it was a mess of neo-Confederate terrorists uh, out there. As you can see, this is a real image, and they're giving the Nazi salute. How much more disrespectful can you be to American soldiers today and American soldiers in the past? I should say U.S. soldiers that fought in the U.S. military, especially against Nazi Germany and gave their lives where it was a high casualties. How is this not disrespectful? How is the Confederate flag not disrespectful of U U.S. troops? But these are the same people that will tell you taking a knee or refusing to stand during a national anthem at a sporting event is disrespectful to U.S. troops, and nothing could be further from the, tru from the truth, okay? But this is an actual image of neo-Confederate suspected terrorists, suspected racists in Dallas giving a Nazi salute to antagonize um, freedom fighters is the way I'll put it. So let me just go ahead and share some of the text of this petition. We, the residents of Gaston County, North Carolina, call on the Gaston County commissioners to honor the spirit of the resolution that was passed in a special meeting on August the 3rd, 2020, to remove and relocate the Confederate monument that currently resides in a cage in front of the county courthouse, which was recommended by the board appointed. Council of Understanding, which voted for the removal and relocation of the statue. So prior to the commissioners voting on August the 3rd to relocate, to remove and relocate, um, this has been a months-long process that started uh, almost three months ago, okay? And so when it was first, this issue was brought up with the county board, uh, they decided to create a council of understanding. And I believe Tracy Fieldbeck, the chairman, proposed it. It was second, and Tom Kiger chaired it. So there, there was a meeting for several weeks, and then Tom Kiger uh, called for a vote, and the vote was seven to five to relocate, to remove and relocate the monument. So then it brought us to the August the 3rd special meeting, where it was brought again on the agenda, and there was a 5-2 vote to take the recommendation of the council will understand to remove and relocate the Confederate monument. And and so, um, let me. that is what this next paragraph can, uh, covers. So again, two resolutions were voted on, and the second resolution was to convey ownership of the county-owned monument to the North Carolina Sons of Confederate Veterans, who reached out to Chairman Tracy Fieldbeck to take ownership of the statue if the board voted to remove and relocate it, which it did in a 5-2 to vote, and then the board voted 6-1 to to convey ownership to the organization. So now um, the North Carolina Sons of Confederate Veterans has refused to take ownership, and the two commissioners that voted against removal and relocation of the Confederate statue have put forth a new resolution to void, and void the now mute resolution conveying ownership, but added language to keep the statue in place and not remove it from the courthouse. Commissioners Chad Brown and Jack Brown are using the bad faith of the North Carolina Sons of Confederate Veterans to keep the monument in its current location by adding their bad faith resolution to the August 25th, 2020 agenda. And, um, you know, this is just, it goes on to pretty much say 
that it is unacceptable. Um, it is not, let me go ahead and just stop sharing this part, um, that it is not, it, it, it is not pertinent that that resolution conveying ownership to the sons of Confederate veterans be voted upon or rescinded. It's, it's not a contract. It's not a contract. If they refuse to sign the contract, then there's no contract. There's no need to vote on rescinding a resolution uh, because the resolution is already mute because of their refusal to hold up their end. Now, some people have said that, and I also put forth this question. I wonder if this was the plan all along to uh, pretend like, you know, they wanted to take it and then you know just throw the try to throw the whole process in disarray uh by reneging on what uh, taking ownership as they conveyed that they wanted ownership all right so here here we are now with chad brown and commissioner jack brown trying to exploit the moment um to to get the confederate monument to stay where it's at if they didn't do anything else the, the process to remove the statute and put it in storage can take place immediately. Now, the county commission in that resolution voted to give them six months to find a suitable location. Since they have reneged on it, on the deal, then the county commissioner sh commissioners or the county board should go ahead and just put it in storage until another owner can be found. Hopefully, one of the two, uh, and this is mentioned in the petition, uh, one of the two county uh, museums where the statue can be put on display, not destroyed, but given its full context by including um, the full text of the dedication speech, which again was full of racist, white supremacist talking points, as was the sign of the times during that day. All right. So I, I agree. In the past, I have said I wanted these monuments restored, destroyed. But I agree with people that history shouldn't be destroyed and not some of my enemies, but this has been raised by people on Black Talk Radio Network. And at the time, I didn't agree with them. I was like, man, why you want these artifacts to remain? You know they promoting white supremacy. All right. They want them to remain in place. But I'm like, no, they can't remain in place uh, because that is the county government or the state government or the federal government giving legitimacy to the Confederacy, a, a, a short-lived government that tried to overthrow it to maintain slavery and the subjugation of Negroes and deny them citizenship, as well as women, and nobody really talks, talks about that. And so I feel like the compromise is to put it in a museum where we can go show. I'm sure they have Nazi artifacts in museums, even though, you know, it is against the law for uh, any municipalities or governments, be they local, uh, I don't know if they have states or whatever they call those, their re different regions of Germany, but it's against the law to display Nazi for paraphernalia because they understand that you don't want to revisit that history and therefore those sort of monuments and idols um, are there to promote ideology and to recruit followers. And we've seen that play out well over and over here in the United States, you know, particularly Dylan Roof, who is from the area, from a neighboring county who went into South Carolina and murdered some some uh, uh, black Christians in the black church in South Carolina, Charleston, uh, South South Carolina. All right. Um, uh, and so we we know what is promoting and that's just unacceptable. But if placed in a museum and given its proper context, then I think that serves as a warning to humanity and reminding us of the type of evil people that inspired the Nazis. So going back to this photo, and there have been many books uh, written on the subject, but going back uh, to this photo that is part of the petition, a very real photo out of Dallas, North Carolina, which is in Gaston County, um, the, a lot of people don't know, and there are, have been academic books written on the topic that the Nazis were inspired by the United States and particularly the, the Confederacy. Okay? The, the United States under Jim Crow. 
the race laws and the murdering of indigenous people and taking their land. This is cited in Mein Kampf, which is Hitler's uh, bi biography. Okay, his biography slash manifesto. And so these people obviously know that connection with their Confederate flag while giving us displaying Confederate flags while giving Nazi salutes. Nazism was born here in the United States. So um, I think people need to know that and should know that. Knowledge is power, okay? So I'm hoping that people will sign this petition. I understand that there have been uh, demonstrations called at the county courthouse um, where they normally take have been taking place. One was at 10 a.m. this morning. There will be another one uh, on this Saturday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. And then on Sunday at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, I and uh, my daughters do plan to attend. So I hope to see you out there. Uh, but also, um, you know, we have this commissioner's meeting coming up Tuesday night, August the 25th. We need to turn out strong, just like we turned out strong on August the 3rd. All right, we all as people that turned out, uh, the preachers, the pastors, um, the grassroots organizers, activists, and concerned citizens need to turn out strong August the 25th, okay, and, and be making phone calls right now and sending emails to county commissioners to vote no on Chad Brown and Jack Brown's new resolution, which contains the language to keep the, the Confederate monument where it is at that is just unacceptable as one of the commissioners stated um which is in the video archives on the county website um that you know we want to move into this isn't jim crow era no more this ain't 1965 it's not 1865 this 2020 this is a new century the 21st century the whole world is moving forward on these quote unquote racial issues so uh it's time that Gaston County moves into the 21st century. And so, um, again, if you cannot attend, remember, if you sign a petition, uh, which you can simply, let me pull up that information again. Let me copy the link. Um, you can go to Gaston, uh, uh, y'all excuse me for a minute, uh, www.change.org, uh, remove. Yeah, after the dot org slash remove Gaston County Confederate Monument from courthouse. No spaces, no underscores, all just one. Remove Confederate remove Gaston County Confederate Monument from courthouse. Okay? And if you pull that up on your phone, uh, you'll be able to find that petition. And please sign it. It'll go straight to the emails of all seven of the county commissioners, and I will print it out and have it delivered to them on August the 25th. All right, this has been yours truly, Scotty Reed, with a Black Talk Radio uh, news broadcast and podcast. Please continue to support not only this broadcast, but the elevation of independent black media voices and mar other marginalized voices by making a donation today to the North Carolina-based new media nonprofit, Black Talk Media Project. Peace and blessings to all. <laughs>